here's the 1987 300D. You've been uh, following along, you got to see a lot of different things I've done with it. Finally got it in the garage. And so, I got the SL stored away right now. Let me show that real quick. So it's under the car cover, and so it'll be nice and safe under there. I got the battery unplugged, everything's uh, locked up, ready to go, so. Now I can just focus on this, this for a while. And it'll be good to get rid of some of the stains in the driveway too. So, yeah. Now with this, definitely want to capture some good before shots. So, yeah, I got a issue on my windshield. I'll have to get that replaced. But the big thing here is, you know, I got holes in the dash. Pretty bad. It's nice and crispy. And uh, the vents are definitely tired. Barely move. Uh, and, um, yeah, since I've updated the side panels, you know, later on, they uh, put the wood under here. And the first dash I found, you know, for better or worse, it, it was one of the later models that has the wood. So I'm, I have a replacement dash with the wood. I got the wood refinished. So I kind of showed a little preview of that. So there's some of the, the one on the roll box. And... Um, yeah, I'll put in all the other wood after I get the dash in too. So now I'm just gonna start taking things apart. One of the big things will be basically taking the glove box out, all the stuff out of it, take the cluster out, unplug all that, start taking the vents out. There's basically some clips. You can barely see it right here. You can kind of use a pick tool and get those four uh, clips kind of loosen them up and then pull this this pulls right out the uh, center is a little bit like that too there's a, a screw on this side screw on this side and uh, then basically uh, there's like an Allen in here I'll have to get a flashlight to really see it I don't know if it's, it shows on camera but I can't even hardly see it here but there's something back there where I can fit an Allen key into. And then that's going to help separate this vent, like basically this piece, from the, the back where the flap is. And then that pulls out. So start off getting those out. I'll start disassembling the center console. I'll take the radio out, set that aside. I'm going to have a lot of things set aside here. Yeah, get the glove box completely out. Um, and then I even have a new... Uh, glove box door which has the wood right here so that must have only been 1990 91 because the 92 I have it has an airbag over there this side I've already got partially uh, disassembled I also replaced the cruise control uh, amplifier and so that did not fix cruise control uh, I also replaced this too that didn't fix it so pretty much got to do the cruise control actuator um, that's over by the throttle get that replaced there's uh, something here just kind of interesting. If you do replace your turn signal and then you get this and you wonder what, why is there an extra thing hanging here? Basically the plug is uh, right on the other side of here. It's a pretty big plug that goes in. And then there's just this piece dangling. That's if you have the station wagon. So the station wagon has a, a specific plug that just for the uh, uh, back windshield. So that's regular to see it hanging like that, no problem. Yeah, I've just left these connected so that they're functional. I'll go ahead and get the battery unplugged and start uh, start pulling stuff out. Yeah, up here too, like this is, uh, I got new pieces for this. These are probably going to break when I'm coming out. These are ones that you want to use a pick tool to kind of wedge under here, not a screwdriver. I mean, this dash I don't care, but the other ones, if you have a good dash, don't do that. Uh, I'll probably reuse this this screen because uh, it's a little better shape. We'll have to see about the A-pillars. I know it's possible to fit the dash in here. I've taken a dash out without taking the A-pillar trim off, but it's not that bad. I'm just a little bit worried, especially because it's tucked under here. Like, 
Are there going to be any clips that break? Those are definitely some of the worries I have. Um, something under here too is uh, there's going to be a lot of vacuum lines, and so I've gotten new rubber connectors for all the parts where the where the vacuum lines connect. And so I, I'm pretty sure that there's going to be some really worn out, crispy ones, broken ones. So I'll be able to get to all the vacuum lines and uh, refresh everything under there, the vacuum pods. Before I get started, I'll show off the new dash. So here, I kind of duck down. You can see here's a little preview of that wood. So I've got that. It's secured in really nicely. And uh, I took off all of the airbag pieces that go here. The glove box should screw and attach to this. So it should be the same part. Uh, yeah, I've cleaned it up really nicely. Uh, scrubbed it, put some 303 on there. Um, just every time I, I went through it with a rag, I, uh, if there's any dirt on it, I just did it again until it came clean. So yeah, it's in good shape. Uh, there's just a couple, you know, bends here from taking it out. I don't care about that. A little bit of wear over here too. And then I took the screens out while I was, uh, doing it. Now this one, yeah, this is definitely broken. Uh, but yeah, you can see the wheel's not in here. This is where this plugs into that scroll wheel. And then there's a little channel for the wire too, which I ended up cutting the wire when I took it out of the car. And uh, this one has some damaged screens, but there's the air airbag piece that goes through the SRS airbag. Uh, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, and then there's the, the B-pillar trim that I'm kind of working on every, every once in a while, just kind of using that trim adhesive to, to fix it up. So, yep, going to get my tools and uh, start taking the current car apart. Going to try to capture a demo about this. So here I just got a right angle pick tool and I'm just going to kind of get this under those clips. You know, just kind of did that, turned it, get it pulled up. Uh, looks like the one up here is already pulled down. Oh, it broke. Okay, good. This one up here. Okay. Oops, yeah, that broke too. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that one's already broke. Looks like there's just the one clip stopping it. So let me go ahead and get under that one again. And uh, with that down here, let's see if this comes out. Oh, awesome. This totally broke over here. So yeah, this is the part that sucks about doing any work uh, on an old car is that you're, you're going to break stuff. So I got good backup parts and uh, there's always there's a pretty good stream of these in the junkyard, so I'm not too worried about that. But I'm gonna go ahead and just go back to regular to use the my both hands here. Oh wow, there we go. There's those clips. It's been about two hours, and I've got the dash out here, and um, yeah, I, I started swapping over some of the stuff. It's already looking pretty good, uh, but first I'm gonna clean this up. So. Yeah, you could tell. I mean, I did it pretty lazy. Like, when I go to put it in, I'm going to, of course, take the steering wheel uh, off and uh, take the A-pillars off, I think. Uh, yeah, it's possible to get it in there, but I don't think it's a great idea to do that. For taking it out, because I don't care, it's already messed up. I, I just pulled it right out. But, yeah, I do have a new vacuum pod for this guy. Um, but the rest of them, yeah, I'll have to just test those out. And... Uh, there's a lot of these vacuum connectors here. Like there's a yeah, Y connector. I can already tell this is really uh, old, you know, and uh, I have new ones. And uh, yeah, I might replace all the light bulbs too. This go to like the, the middle scroll wheel. There's one over here for that scroll wheel. Uh, but this has got to be one of the easiest dashes I've ever had to pull. So yeah, it took about two hours taking my time going pretty slow. And um, 
putting everything into boxes, taping it where it goes, or you know, basically putting the screws where I, I know I can find them. So overall, uh, yeah, pretty happy. I'm just gonna start cleaning this up. Going through the vacuum pods here, and uh, basically I'm over here on the passenger side, the US, the, the right side of the car. And so, um, yeah, I'm just kind of taking the lines off one by one. They're color coded here, and uh, you just kind of have to know what they are. There's, there's definitely it's documented, but like this one is uh, recirculation. I think it's, I think there's two that do recirculation. So I'm just kind of using my hand tester. And, uh, yeah, none of, none of these are, are, well, actually a couple of them are okay, but most of them are not. Okay. So here's the one going to the second one, the blue green. mostly holding but it's got like a little leak you can see that move so yeah you know basically you have to take the dash out to get to these the only part that you can really buy new anymore is the diverter pot up here before I tested this I actually have all the parts in a bag here for my elbows uh, yeah the Y connectors and uh, the U ones. And so I have all of these new, these are um, genuine Mercedes parts. So I've been going through and just replacing each of the vacuum connectors. And so I've done that for all the ones I can uh, reach to. Some of them were not these right angle 90s, but um, they fit a little bit better and it's nice and tight. So there's a couple back here too. There's another pod in here too, once you take this part off. There's additional clips done here too, you know, so you're going to want to have a magnet tool and grab these as you pop them off. And I'm sure those are really fun to put back on, but, um, yeah, I'm just going to think about this for a little bit and, uh, we'll see what happens. So just trying the car out, um, I'm not really seeing anything move and you can kind of see Here's the recirculate flap. It's hooked to this part here, which is hooked to the, the vacuum pod. And that's supposed to open and close the recirculating flap. That functionality does not work. The left side, yeah, it actually looks like both sides are not like in there. They must have fallen out. I'm not sure what happened here. I do have the parts car, so I mean, what I could do is take off the uh, SRS, the airbag on the passenger side. That should give me access to, to this block. And then I can pull these off one at a time in the parts car, see if that one has any good pods. And um, But if it does, I have to pull a dash, and then it's a used part. So, oh, gosh, I'm not really sure what to do. Over in the parts car right now, so here I just check out the, uh, there's the airbag. So it's super easy, there's just one big long bolt, 10 millimeter, it goes from underneath. And then that just comes right out by itself. And then there's a couple brackets here, I just took it off just to get better access, because you can only really get to one through four without having to take that uh, thing that holds the airbag in. And anyways, I tested these, and so, uh, yeah, like when you connect it like this, you know, I'm testing it on the line. I'm not testing the block. So, uh, numbers two through six are good on this one. So that's pretty cool. And, uh, I mean, just looking at them, they look okay. Like they look like the other car, it was completely dirty. And, uh, like it looked like a lot of more original. So I'll have to see, hopefully some of these have been replaced. Even if they haven't, it looks like they're, they're at least better than what I have. So, um, could be a great, another great experience. Take a dash off again. So, uh, yeah, it's, 
it's not it's not that bad to take it off on the W124. So um, yeah, I I'll uh, consider that for tomorrow. Now it's day two. I'm gonna look at uh, the diverter box, like that top piece on there. I'll show that in just a second. And then basically, I think I have most of the parts planned out that I need. And um, I've just been working with, uh, there's an awesome guy, Dave, on the 500 eboard. So I've been talking with him and other folks there and looking at the existing articles on there and uh, part numbers. So I, th I think I should be able to get what I need. We'll see. So here's that diverter pod, and I have that. I have that right here. And so uh, that one is bad. So I showed before, you can go to the distribution block and test it. And so here I'm just going to hook up uh, something to this. You know, I basically unplugged the, the connector to that. And then just using a hand pump. It's bad. So, yeah, and uh, I basically confirmed all the other ones are bad in this car. The only one which is um, not completely bad, and I think it's on both of the, so basically there's the left uh, circulation pod, there's the right pod right here, there's the defroster pod, that um, must flip something in here. Now my car's a little older and I have two of these, the footwell ones. There's usually like a square one in here for people. Um, now I have the two circular ones. These are available new. I'm gonna go ahead and get those. And uh, then besides this, there's a guy down here. And that one's not available, but there is a diaphragm you can get from George Murphy from Performance uh, Analysis. So I'm gonna go ahead and order that. and. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to take this off first, and I just wanted to show, basically, there's a screw here, there's a screw here, and there's the clips that I kind of showed before. Uh, there, I'm just going to use a magnet tool, and then a screwdriver, and pop those one at a time. And then basically, on the back, there's these little connectors, and they hold the vacuum lines nice and neat. So where you can find the two screws back there, you can use a mirror, is just like right here. When you see that post, just to the, you can see that, that head that's popping up, the plus sign, the star. So that, uh, th that screw, the screw head is right there next to that post. Same over here. You're gonna see it right there. So with that, I just used, the only screwdriver that I had that fit in that area is one of those reversible toolkit screwdrivers. I don't, I don't even know what car I got this from at the junkyard, but uh, you can do it by feel or use that little mirror, kind of get it on there and then go ahead and take, I'm gonna start taking those out first. Then I'll take the ones on the side. Then I'll take the clips last. Okay, with those off, let's just see if this, yeah, there we go. Start from the top and just, I mean, start from the front, just lift it up. And there we go. So it all comes out. I've already disconnected my vacuum line, but yeah, here you can kind of see now where those uh, screw holes are. So right here by the post that has the vacuum line connectors, there it is, there's one there, one on this side too. So there, just think about it as being on the inside um, next to the post. All right, so if we go look at what I got, this is, uh, well, I've got a spider in here. <laughs> so, let me just take this pieces of the spider out of there. Uh, I'll get some of the legs out in a minute. Uh, but yeah, basically, in here, this is where the coolant's coming in for the heater core. Uh, yeah, better access to the pod back there, too. So that's great. Here's this flap, right? So I noticed this flap was, uh, it was like hanging off and it was just in there. So. Yeah, there's kind of like these hinges, these nubs, and they're supposed to be going in here. And so off camera, I'm just gonna take a minute, get that in there so that this thing can operate. And you can kind of see there's already, this is the center pod. This was connected to this, I believe. And you know, when it's actuated, I believe it's supposed to be pulling this down, okay? 
and then that should be the evaporator right there. Uh, this part right here. So, yep, I'm just gonna get to that, look at fixing this up, uh, and then this one will be interesting. Uh, I think a lot of people have showed these, but yeah, there's the vacuum pod that controls this back piece, and so, um, and there's probably supposed to have been foam on here. I'm sure it just fell off. So maybe I'll, I'll look at other, what it should be. But yeah, here, there's three of these push fasteners. And then those three little feet are coming from the vacuum pot itself. So what I'm going to do is just break those little feet off because I don't care. The vacuum pot has the new one and then I should have a chance to reuse the clip. I got that diverter pod open. So basically, yeah, you can see on the bottom, I broke all the feet off. And then what's important is like between the feet and where the clip goes, there's these rubber gaskets. So I'll uh, use some 303 on those and then put it back. And then I have the original ones. I mean, you should probably just honestly go to the hardware store and just get some of these, but I don't want to leave. <laughs> so anyways, uh, yeah, when you open the vacuum pods, you can just use a screwdriver to to just kind of wedge in there and, and get it. But you can see that there's like the cup piece. And so the, the part that goes bad in all of these, they're not always, they don't look the same as this, but is this uh, rubber diaphragm piece. And so, um, yeah, there we go. So basically, yeah, this one, I don't see any, just inspecting it, I don't see anything. Oh, I see it there. Camera helped pick it up. Thanks, camera. But there's there's definitely like a little, yeah, so you can see my finger behind it. There's the tear. So that right there is, is letting it not use the vacuum. And uh, most of the time they put the manufacturing date on here, but... I don't know about you, I can't read that. I don't know what that's supposed to say. The new one up here. Um, and there's also a little gasket you want to transfer underneath the pot itself too. So here, uh, I'm guessing this is May 20, uh, 2022. Uh, maybe this is the week number, I'm not exactly sure. There's the Mercedes part number. That's probably an, the internal part number. Uh, yeah, and so basically, with that gasket on here, get this kind of uh, aligned in here, like that, and it always goes to the right. Uh, also, yeah, this fell off, so I just kind of put double, I put tape on there, and then double side taped it to the top, so that I always have whatever the part number was here. But yeah, here with this. Yeah, here we go. You can see this. Now this, when you take this pot out, you do have to uh, take a little plastic clip out. And I just use a screwdriver and kind of uh, push the little piece out. So here we go. So this kind of uh, goes in here. Like that. And so, yeah, when you get it out, I just use the screwdriver, the flat screwdriver, on on this side and so yeah you can just kind of use the screwdriver put your thumb behind the screwdriver and then push this and then and you'll eventually get those four clips closer together and it'll pop right out so yep just need to put that on and then on this side let's see if I kinda yeah now you can see those uh, feetsies coming up so this is the part where I can put the little rubber gasket on here you know, like that, and then put that clip on top. So I'm gonna go inside, do that on a bench. This is the center vent, where you can use the thumb wheel to make it open and close. Uh, yeah, the diverter, I think that's mixing in heat. I think that's the idea, is it's supposed to be just like a shower diverter, it's like hot and cold. Uh, I think that's what it's doing. And so, uh, yeah, and then the center vent, I need to get to that one next. Here's the center pod. So I just got this out and basically it's facing up and uh, I used a screwdriver to get off the rod that's attached to it. And so uh, once you do that, 
then basically I just use two screwdrivers to kind of, uh, because it is on a bracket, and you're going to have a really hard time turning it, at least I did. Let's see if I can show this with, uh, <laughs> I need to get a tripod. But basically, okay, yeah, if you use your screwdriver to push on one of these uh, pieces here, like if you just think about this as being twisted in to the device, the bracket. I push one side this way, one side this way, and uh, just push it really hard. Get two long screwdrivers, and then with that I was able to break it free. It's possible to fit your hand down there, uh, but just using my hand and turning it, it wasn't going anywhere. And I'm sure you could spray it with something, but I didn't want to go there. And so anyways, when you take this apart, just like a typical vacuum pot in here, uh, here's the diaphragm. So this one's is is totally junked, and so uh, yeah, just there. It's a little tricky at first. It always can look okay, but no. See, you can see here how it's just got a major uh, flaw in it. So it's got the holes here. It's pretty crispy. Uh, I mean, overall, I guess if it is 35 years old, it's not that bad. But yeah, it's not holding pressure or holding vacuum. I mean, so. Uh, yeah, this is the one I'll have to get the replacement diaphragm from performance analysis. So I'm going to go ahead and get that ordered. And uh, then I got that one all sorted up there, put back together. Here's the door. So you do have to, uh, and then yeah, here's the top that goes on here. So, you know, you kind of just use your screwdriver. Right here you can wedge under there and then it just kind of comes loose and then take this rod off. But basically first, before you do that, you have your hinge where the, um, the flap door goes. And that's what this controls, is it controls the flap door going up or down. Uh, so yeah, you can use a screwdriver to kind of push this through, you know, come right through. Then you can take your flap out. You gotta kind of be careful about that one. It's, um, I had to kind of bend it and go different angles to kind of get it out, but once it's out, then you have access to your pod. And uh, yeah, your pod is basically face down. And then this part here is uh, clocked at such an angle that the um, part here goes to the front of your HVAC. So right behind the climate control, there's like a port where you can uh, test from. Let me just show it. Yeah, right here. And so I have it uh, off there, but yeah, that's where that is. Uh, I'll have to get these out now. And these ones I'll order new. And so, uh, yeah, just looking at it, you know, I'm going to have to take out more paneling and it looks like these have little feet too. So I'll probably be breaking these out. And actually this particular one is good. I tested this one over here, which is a little bit more hidden and that one is not holding any charge. So basically that's the one that absolutely has to get replaced. But this one, I'm gonna do both. If they're new, that's great. It's great to get the new diaphragms there. Hopefully last another 20, 30 years. And you, get, you can see I replaced these, uh, like the Y connector, the elbow, you know, that's all new uh, stuff. So, yep, seems to be going pretty good. And then basically for these pods back here, um, you'll notice that they both have two connectors to them. Uh, and so I don't know if that's called a stage one or stage two or whatever, there's two levels to it. Uh, there's a part you can get on Amazon, and so that's the one that uh, that person, Dave, on 500 eBoard, uh, that guy's a legend. <laughs> he basically, he referred me to the Amazon page, and I'll try to link that. And so basically what you can do here is I can take this part out, disconnect the rod, just like how I disconnected the rod from the center, and then the top piece, you just have to kind of use the screwdriver to line it up again like this so it matches this but the, the piece that he has essentially you can duplicate this piece and it's new so i'm going to do that i'm going to get three of them one for there and then two for over here 
and then those will be new the diverter on top is new the center one will have the yeah you can see there that's where it was and that's the thing you have to kind of turn it um, counterclockwise to get it out yeah and there's those two right down here so uh, get those ordered so yeah I got a way forward for all of this it's great. It is definitely a pain in the ass, and, and uh, already in April it's getting pretty hot here in Phoenix, but that's a great reason to get your AC done. So I don't want it to be the middle of June or July and, and then have this stuff not working. So while it's here, I would feel like an idiot just putting the dash back on, as tempting as it is to just say, oh yeah, great, I did a cosmetic fix, perfect. This stuff needs to work functionally. I'll have my son with me and my wife like we you know if I'm just in the car maybe it doesn't matter but definitely for them they, they got to have AC and um, yep cool well uh, at this point I think I'll have to wait for some parts so maybe I'll go ahead and publish this video and then follow up once I get some more parts so thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time